Hi there, I'm Barbara Fazekas and Groff. I'm a professor at the University of Sydney in Sydney, Australia. And the question that I'm answering today is, um, why is regulatory T cell reconstitution important to prevent GVHD and allo stem cell transplantation? So the work I've done in this area has been in mouse models. And I've been working for many years on how regulatory T cells actually perform their functions in vivo. And we've discovered that one of the very important functions that they have is to actually regulate um, dendritic cell co-stimulation, that's CD80 and CD86, in the steady state, not just when there is also an inflammatory reaction going on. And when there aren't enough Tregs to control the number of DCs in an animal, the amount of co-stimulation goes up, and then you get what we classically call lymphopenia-induced proliferation. So usually because regulatory T cells and conventional T cells are in a balance with each other, regulatory cells survive on the IL-2 that's made by the conventional cells. When you have any sort of non-specific lymphopenia, for example, the type that's induced in bone marrow transplant patients before they are actually given their stem cell transplant, then the number of Tregs won't be enough to control the dendritic cells and so co-stimulation goes up. And this produces, uh, the lymphopenic situation produces two types of T-cell proliferation. There's one type that's really homeostatic. It's not dependent on co-stimulation and it's only dependent on basically um, the number of T cells there, the amount of IL-7 we think that's, that's present. But the other form, which is the problematic form and which is by far the greater proportion of that type of proliferation early on, is the fast phase proliferation that's driven by, um, in syngenaic models, it's driven by the recognition, cross-reactive recognition of low affinity self-antigen. And in allo models, it's driven by allo reactivity. So we've previously shown that we have a Treg reconstitution protocol. What that means is we put in Tregs into an animal that's lymphopenic. We, they have to be supported with IL-2 or they'll just die. Um, and if they don't die, it's because they're contaminated with conventional cells that are making IL-2 for them. So that's actually a bad thing. You don't want that to happen. Um, so basically, they have to be supported with IL-2. In the mouse models, we've used, um, in mouse models, we've used IL-2 anti-IL-2 complexes that are specific for the CD25 high affinity receptor. In humans, it's much more common to use um, low-dose IL-2 to do this. And we do that until the number of Tregs comes up to the normal number, which happens in our animal models in about a week. And over that period, CD8086 goes back to a normal level. Now, when you put in conventional T cells at that point, you get no GVHD at all in your Treg reconstituted animals. And your other animals die about 12 days later from frank GVHD. So in the study that I'm presenting at this meeting, um, what we did was to work out what the mechanism of that was. And what we showed is that basically the activation and proliferation and differentiation of the transferred conventional T cells is markedly reduced when Tregs are in there. And that's because the cells aren't getting their signal from CD80 and 86. And this affects, we've actually done an experiment in which we had a little trace of transgenic cells that are alloreactive and we showed that they're also beautifully suppressed by this mechanism. You still get a few cells coming through and those cells behave exactly like the cells in animals that don't have Tregs on board. So they become effector cells, they make cytokines, they go to the sites of GVHD. And if you take them out of those sites, they make just as much cytokine per cell as the cells in animals with frank GVHD. But this is all a numbers game. When you've only got 50 of them there versus 5,000, you don't get any clinical syndrome. So basically what we're saying is if you understand what Tregs do, you get them in first, you reconstitute the entire patient with Tregs and then you come in with your conventional cells which you're going to use for your graft versus 
um, tumor effect, then you can basically get um, graft versus tumor effect and reconstitution slowly of basically naive cells without this huge proliferation, the oligoclonal proliferation that causes GVHD. And so there have been a couple of clinical trials um, in which Tregs were put in early and in much larger numbers than people usually use, and they certainly had less GVHD. We haven't yet had a trial that really uses the mechanism I'm talking about, which is to come in at the time of the stem cell transfer with purified um, donor Tregs to support with IL-2 to monitor the CD8086 expression and the number of Tregs, and to come in with the conventional cohort from the donor only after you've reached um, what we call full reconstitution. And I would predict that that would completely prevent GVHD. And I think along with that, it will also prevent a lot of the um, CMV and so on that we see because our, our other studies actually in, um, with clinical materials show that um, before you get clinical CMV problems, you actually have an activation state that looks like early GVHD, even though it may not manifest itself as full GVHD in the clinical situation. So basically that's why I think it's important to think about this. And I'd be very interested in collaborating with anyone who's interested in setting up such a trial. Um, basically in terms of advising about monitoring and so on, so that we can actually work out whether this works as well in people as it does in mice, because it would be a huge advance if we could actually get rid of GVHD and all the infection control problems that come with the GVHD immune phenotype. 